Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we just finished up the study of Satan uh, last week, and now we're going to be starting a new study. I settled on the study of the Ten Commandments, and that's what we'll be looking at over the uh, next few weeks. It's uh, The Ten Commandments have been uh, kind of maligned quite a bit over the last several years. Uh, it's been taken out of the courthouse, it's been taken out of schools, it's been taken off the plaques in front of buildings. It's uh, man is really wanting to attack it. And uh, you wouldn't you would wonder why, because I mean, what what is bad about thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal? In fact, many of our laws, our civil laws, are based on those very same things. And uh, so we know that uh, the Ten Commandments, when they're being obeyed, we have uh, society is better off. It's a more uh, calm, uh, peaceful society. Uh, in fact, the Ten Commandments is one of the common things we have it between the Jews and Roman Catholics and Protestants. We all believe in. Uh, Try to practice the, the Ten Commandments as part of the, the law that God gave. We're going to be looking at that again over the next few weeks. And pray that uh, maybe you'll study a little bit and, and maybe go into it and try to try to memorize it. If you're a Christian, have you memorized the Ten Commandments? Do you know what each one of them say? This, you know, kind of in order. We know the first four have to do with, with our relationship and our dealings with the Lord. And then we see the Fifth Commandment, of course, is the relationship between parents. And then we get to the, the last five, and those have to do with society. And that's what we'll be breaking it down into as we go. Uh, it appears in two different places in the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and Exodus chapter 20. I'll be using Exodus chapter 20 as uh, my reference here as we read the different scriptures. So if you want to open your Bibles to, to Exodus chapter 20, it's in verses 1 to 17. And, and today we'll just be starting off with a, more of an introduction. We know the Ten Commandments are part of the, the law that God gave to Moses to give to the people. Um, there's 613 precepts, statutes, and commandments all together, and it deals with all areas of life, you know, from sanitation to, to how we treat one another to how we ad, uh, administer justice and all these things. So um, as we just look at it, we get a better idea, but we're going to focus on the Ten Commandments, those ten, and we're going to see how they apply. And, Again, it's so important that we understand and, and how important they are into society, into our daily life. Uh, we try to obey those Ten Commandments as best we can and do those things. And so we'll see that um, there's, and we're going to look at four different questions we're going to try to answer as we go through this. Uh, who's to obey the commandment? Who's it written? Is this written to the Jews? Is it written to the Gentiles? Uh, who is it written to? Who's to, who's to obey it? Um, uh, how long was this commandment to be enforced? Was it just for the uh, the Old Testament? Is it for the New Testament? Is it a part of part for the old, part for the new? Uh, we'll be looking at that. Uh, what is forbidden, or what is the charge of the commandment? Uh, some of the commandments say uh, you're forbidden to do this, and others say this is what you need to do. So what's, we'll look at what's forbidden and what the charge is. However, that uh, works into each commandment, and then um, we're going to see. Uh, what is the decision or is demanded or required by that commandment? What do we have to do? What decision do I have to make uh, to obey that commandment? And um, again, when we, we look at any of the commandments of God as he gives them, I mean, God is, uh, he's not into the trivia. He means what he says. Uh, when he gives us his commandments, he, he wants them to be obeyed. Uh, this is represented. They're, they're literal. They're obvious. We, once we study them, we get into the Hebrew a little bit so we can understand a little bit better maybe. But uh, they're pretty upfront, And so God expects Christians, uh, as he expected the nation of Israel, and we know that he gave these commandments for a certain purpose. And, of course, that was to bring them to Christ. But uh, we can see that a little bit later. So those four things we're going to see. And then we're going to see some, uh, and some of them we have consequences. It tells us what the consequences of breaking that commandment is. Uh, sometimes we can do things and uh, we don't see the immediate consequences. You know, you can tell a lie. And uh, sometimes you don't see the immediate consequences for that lie. Sometimes you never see the consequences as far as, as, far as your relationships. But uh, so we can, we're going to see um, what kind of what the, uh, is expected of us, the consequences. Others, we're going to see the benefits. There's benefits to being obedient to the Ten Commandments. There's things that we gain, and that's true of anything in the Scripture. But as we as we look at these commandments, um, I think that uh, the idea that we have to, we have to be, again, submitting our will to God. All right? Uh, as, I, as I read through these, especially those last five, as we see the, personal, the interpersonal relationships with, between humanity, uh, Christians and non-Christians. 
and uh, we see how those things relate. And if, we, if we're not submitted to the will of God, then we're going to be taking some of those that we're going to try to find ways that we can maybe go around them, a little, uh, you know, kind of find an excuse to break them. Uh, so we, we'll be looking at some of those things too. If you remember, we studied in the study of Satan all those those 16 deadly deeds, and Satan uses those, and he uses those to try to get us to to ignore some of these commandments. So we see that we're going to see there's consequences, uh, there's benefits, and then the last thing we're going to look at in, in that part of it is what did Jesus teach about it. So we take the, the Ten Commandments, we know they're, they're listed here in the Old Testament. Then we get to the New Testament, we see Jesus uh, reaffirming them, uh, re, uh, reestablishing them, making them neat. In fact, when we get to those, we'll see that Jesus even makes it harder. Uh, just for an illustration there, you know, he says, uh, the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not kill. And uh, Jesus says, if you have hatred in your heart, it's the same as murder. Uh, they say that uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said, if you even look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. So we take it from a physical thing here in the Old Testament as we look at these. And Jesus goes a, a little bit farther. Not only shouldn't you do it physically, but also you shouldn't be doing it in a spiritual or in an emotional sense. So those are the things we'll be looking at. And the Ten Commandments are, like, again, they're straightforward. And uh, there's something we can learn from them. But we want to understand the value of them. The value of obeying it. It's just not do this, do this, do this. It's why do I do that? And I, I think about back when, as we raised children, as I raised our children, you say, you know, don't do that or do that. And they say, well, why? And so then you have to try to explain to them. Sometimes you have a good answer and sometimes you don't. So you get upset with them and tell them not to worry about it. But the idea is God gives us these commandments. So we, we know that he gave them. So the why is because God said so. And uh, see what Jesus had to say then, of course, in the New Testament. So uh, they give us a pattern for a righteous society. So I'm going to uh, read some scripture to you here. It says over in Deuteronomy 4, 6, he says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of all nations will show, hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So what does he say there? He said, uh, here's, here's the Ten Commandments. Here's the law. He said, now I want you to do it. I want you to live in such a way that those nations out there, those pagan nations, they're going to see you. And what's it going to say? Surely this great nation is a why and understanding people. They have a great God. And that's the purpose of it. They, there to be an example. There to be a uh, something for people to look at and to see a light, to be encouraged. Another scripture we have is over in Romans 7.12. It says, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So these commandments, again, they're not grievous. Uh, they're, they're easy to obey if we stay out of the flesh and we stay focused on the Lord. They're so much easier. And if we just look at them in a, in a sense that I'm going to do it to be obedient to God. I'm going to just trust Him. I want Him to see how much I love Him, how much I appreciate Him, how much I, I value uh, his word and his salvation. So we're going to see this portion of scripture. I'm not going to go much farther with this part of it today. We'll I'll finish up the introduction tomorrow. But uh, if you would just go ahead and get your Bible and look up Exodus chapter 20 and it's the first 17 verses and you'll see how it's laid out and get an idea, get a feel for it. And uh, like I said, tomorrow we'll finish with our introduction part of it and, and then we'll get into the, the meat of it, how God presents it and, and how he wants us to obey it. Uh, God gave it to Moses to give to the people, and the purpose is to bring the people closer to him. And to, it shows us that we can't, if you took those 613 laws and statutes, no one could obey all them. No one could obey all them, so they had their day of atonement. Once a year they would go off of the sacrifices for the atonement for their sin. Nobody can be that perfect, and that's why Jesus lived that perfect life, so he would prove that, that he was able and he could be that worthy sacrifice. So we get into the Ten Commandments, we'll be studying them, and we'll see some of the consequences of breaking them, and we'll see the benefits and of keeping them. And so I pray that you enjoy the study. It'll be probably, we'll go through at least the month of January, as we get started here at the end of December, and be through the month of January, time we get through all of it. But it, it's a good study. Uh, there's a lot to be gained from it, and if we take these and, and listen to them, and apply them. It's what, you know, I talked about uh, reading them and memorizing them, and getting them, but not only do we need to know them, but we need to put them down in our heart that they become a way of life for us. So when we're faced with situations about how to honor God, how to use His name, whether to keep the Sabbath, and all those kind of things, we know what God wants us to do, and we have a desire then through our submission to Him to do what He wants us to do. 
and then then we know we will please him and we'll have the best we can have when you're blessing God with your life uh, you're gonna have the best life you can have so let's pray and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in our next lesson Heavenly Father we do this I thank you uh, for this time that we can come before you we thank you for these uh, Ten Commandments that we're going to look at. We thank you for your great love and how you gave that law to the people so that we would understand how we need to live uh, in our relationship with you and our relationship with one another. Father, we just pray that you touch each heart and each life. And for those that don't know Christ as their Savior, we pray as we look at this that they would come to know the need to have Jesus for their personal Savior. They would repent and trust in his shed blood for their salvation. We thank you again for what you've done for us and for what you're going to do. For We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.